Uh, Unreal 5.5 has a bunch of render pass improvements, um, as you can see in its uh, public roadmap. And everyone's hyping up this thing, or at least I've seen some people being very excited about this on Twitter. And while I do think it's really cool, I have spent the last couple of days trying to figure out how exa exactly how it works. Um, and yeah, I got, I got some help from some other people, but I thought I'd make this video to showcase how to basically make the material they're showcasing here. And uh, by doing so, uh, also I'll show you the, uh, the hurdles I've run into, um, how this is still a very cool thing to, uh, to implement, but there are some quirks that still need solving. And obviously this is the 5.5 uh, preview. Um, I have it open here. So uh, how this thing works is I'll just make a final material first. So it post-processing uh, blur material. And in this material, uh, set the post-processing, we can now define this user scene texture uh, input node. Uh, if you would hook this up to HLS, uh, HLSL, uh, you can uh, check out the code here. There's also a new update in 5.5, where this thing actually has colors now. It's still much better to just <laughs> copy this and put this somewhere else. But uh, by plugging this in, you can find out that you can also do this in a custom node. Uh, and the way it works in a custom node is by just a regular scene texture lookup. Uh, and instead of, you know, just get your UV that you would define regularly, regularly instead of setting your uh, channel, which uh, for post-processing would be 14, uh, here you would set the name of your user scene texture. So behind the scenes, what it's doing is just like it's adding it as like a new scene texture, basically. Um, but instead of a, a number, it's just the name of the, the, the string that uh, you would use, but more on that later. And then, yeah, if it's uh, false or true, so let's say we're going to recreate this thing. Maybe. Um, so here, what they're doing with this blur is they're sampling a quarter size resolution, half size resolution, and the regular one, uh, and lurping it together into this nice looking blur. Um, <laughs> the, how they're showing it here is a bit misleading because, first of all, they have a triple bilinear lerp here, and if you've ever made a bilinear lerp, you, you would know that like, yeah, this is just not how it works. You don't just put in three inputs and get a lerp that way. You need to sample it multiple times and with like different UVs and then lerp it together. So what probably is happening here is just a lerp of what happened before in those uh, half resolution scene textures. Um, as you can see here on the side and the deeper thing that shows up is that there's more than meets the eye, you know, like there's a half A, B and C, and here you just see a half C and a quarter C. So, um, yeah, uh, how this is happening, and this is all thanks to um, this uh, person on Twitter that helped me out called uh, Alge. Uh, I'll, uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but uh, I'll post a Twitter link in the, the, the comments. Uh, but as they um, discovered or like rightfully pointed out is that this probably uh, a, the sampling happens in the half A, then gets sent to the half B and then to the half C. And that way, you know, you can uh, make use of the uh, the actual filtering in here. Uh, how this is set up is, uh, let's say we're going to do half C, so we UV, half C, and then like true or false. And this would be then the, the scene texture lookup uh, you would get from this. So you can do it in a custom node, you can do it in here. Uh, let's first start by just duplicating what we see here, right? So we're just getting the uh, half resolution multiplied by color, lerping it with a uh, quarter resolution and color, and then we just have like a, a quickly made a screen position mask that, that just, it's just like a circular mask, but it doesn't really scale with the... Uh, with the viewport size or anything, but I guess, I mean, this is just a quick example they threw together. So let me just quickly duplicate this and in the process show what I found and how to do this exactly and where it's like quite annoying to work with. Uh, so anyway, uh, we need a, a half C scene texture. Yeah, 
Also, the debugger works really, really weirdly because it knows there's like other half C textures and but it doesn't know how to link it because you have to have it open in your content browser and it also doesn't work when you play, but again, more on that later. So, all right, I have this thing uh, and uh, I can filter this, clamp it, whatever. But yeah, it's, it's missing an input. So how this actually works is if you go in here, you just have to basically make a new material. I'll just copy this and I'll call this um, pp underscore half C. Um, and yeah, so what we do is we make a post-processing material, get our scene texture, post-processing, and connect this here. And what we can then do in the post-processing settings, um, and what we can then do is uh, define this as a user scene texture. So this would be video I have C, think I wrote like that. Yeah, okay. So, uh, and then we can devise this by a value. Um, this can also just be what it used to be, uh, but if I set it to two, this would now be at half resolution. So, um, we need a bunch of those. Uh, if I just connect this now, you can see, I don't know if you can see it in the video, for video purposes, I'll just lower the resolution a bunch to like 8.8 eight or something. And if I save this, now, yeah, as you can see, it's getting the texture at a lower resolution. In the end, you're still gonna need a bunch of this to make it blur properly without showing any edges. Uh, like, okay, it comes with a bilinear filter, but it's it's not magic, you know, and, and you know, you have to clamp it as well because the way it's filtering. Uh, so in order to make this blur, you would have to filter this much, much more. So uh, you can either do like bi cubic filtering. There's a really good uh, video online by uh, Visual Tech Art, his YouTube channel. Uh, he also helped me uh, with figuring out this this, uh, this blur thing quite a bit. So I'll, I'll link that video in the description as well. Uh, but the way to make this work is you would have to basically work in, in steps. So in this uh, half uh, C that we just made, instead of just taking the input here, what we want to do is basically do a blur here and then send it over to, to somewhere else. But as uh, you can see in the, uh, the render pass thing here, there's an A, B and a C. So this happens three times. So the way to do this, and uh, again, I wish you could just do this in a custom node, uh, is you make a few of these, rename them properly to an A and a B. And uh, if we then open this, let's start with the A. What we would do is we just set up a um, regular uh, bilinear blur. All right, so I just restarted my editor. Uh, things were crashing and uh, not updating the viewport. This is 5.5 preview. Things like this happen, I guess. Uh, but it seems to be working now. So what we were trying to do in this uh, half A uh, uh, UST uh, was to set up a sort of blur here and we can sample it in the half B then later and then sample it in half C and then put it into the blur. Uh, so how this would be set up is we take the UV, we uh, would divide it by the uh, view size, or actually no, we would take a uh, an offset value. Uh, so four of them, one would be zero, zero. So we don't need that. One could be uh, one. 0, 1 is 0, 1, and 1 is 1, 1. What we can then do is uh, get our value divided by the view size and then multiply it by the offset that we want. So I'll make a value here. I'll just value like this. And we'll set the value to um, 8 for now. So what we then do is we get this value, we add it to the UV. Uh, this one, just going to the regular one, this one here, let's see if it works. Yes. Okay. So we have a blur that we can control here. So 
just for the sake of this video, I'll go with pretty high values. You can clearly see what's going on. So I'll have an offset of 16. Uh, and what this would do is then offset in this direction and then we load it back together. Uh, for now, I'll just leave it simple like this. What you, uh, what you could do is uh, go further and uh, set up like a proper uh, bilinear blur by getting each other's channels, lerping them together with the other lerp by getting the, the frac of the texture coordinates. But just for brevity's sake, I'm just going to do a uh, sideways uh, blur. Um, okay, so uh, now we have our values here together. They are being sent here uh, to this half A, but before being used as a material, what we can do uh, here is send it off as a user texture. So it would be just processing. Uh, and this would be a value called video half A divided by, um, well, half implies it's divided by two, but again, just so it's a bit more visible, we're going to double all the values. So half would be quarter, and quarter would be eight times. Uh, so yeah, uh, now that we have our output here, and if we would put this in here, to set it to the correct value, so it should be A. As you can see here, we have our newly blurred value in here. Uh, looks like this. We can, but if you filter it, it's blurred a little bit better. Then, next up, we can make a, a half B and a half C. So, let's duplicate these. Half B is not working. Very nice. All right. So, in half B, we, uh, we're going to do the same thing. Maybe let's... Um, uh, now nah, let's just keep going, keep just blurring this direction for now. Um, but instead of our regular post-processing input, we're going to put the half A in here. So the user C texture of video half A. We can get rid of these. Oh, take these values, put them in here. All right. Then, if we change this to, now to a half B, oh, sorry, my bad, didn't define it yet. V, B, and uh, once again, divide this value, this value by four. We now have an even, we have more steps on a blur. But what we can do to make this a bit better is also filter them in here. Uh, and by doing so, the, uh, the result in here should be an even smoother blur. As you can see, it still has a lot of steps. Uh, but you can repeat this process in a half C and so on. And um, how it's set up in the um, example they gave us is probably by using a lot of samples. When I first thought is I, I really just assumed you can get like very, very nice looking blur, but not that many samples because it thought, oh, easy. Just uh, you use like three samples for each and just lurch it together. Unfortunately, it does not work like this. Uh, e even if I would uh, set this all up, which I, um, I'll skip the video uh, and show you what it looks like when it's like all fully set up in the way I'm doing it right now. Uh, it still has a lot of banding issues. All right, so uh, I just finished setting up the uh, half resolution and quarter resolution. As you can see here, it's a bit more blurry than it was before, but it's still not perfect. Uh, while setting this up, I did discover something that uh, helped a little bit though. So uh, maybe good to know is that uh, when setting up these uh, resolutions in here. So, uh, well, yeah, it doesn't re really, well, it does apply. For, okay. So, uh, so yeah, I'm setting up the resolutions in here. Um, not only can you set a texture divisor, you can also set the re resolution relative to the input. So, um, by setting to the negative, uh, value as the, the negative value that is being used for the divisor, um, you basically scale it back up to 
the regular resolution. And so you can scale it up, you can scale it back down, scale it back up, uh, over and over. And this makes it blur a little bit better than just the regular values. Uh, the visual bug that's been uh, bothering me all this time is just purely visual in the viewport. It actually does work if you just put it, ignore it and put it together here. Uh, the bug only seems to appear uh, whenever you're using uh, these uh, user scene textures. Uh, so yeah, I have now my values set up here uh, and they are, they're nice, they're blurry, but uh, they're not as beautiful as the, uh, the blur set up here. So in order to get this result, you need a lot more samples. Uh, and uh, let me quickly just set up the final step here. Still recording? Yes. Uh, okay, so I've now set it up almost identical to what's going on here, just to find some extra values. And uh, as you can see, we have our blur on the on the sides, uh, but it's quite pixelated. So you need like a lot more values. So. Um, this is not a magical solution, is what I what I figured out when I setting this up, uh, and uh, it still is beneficial, you know. So uh, instead of setting this up in a custom node, which would be much much more convenient, so I I hope they uh, they, they figure this out eventually. But instead of setting this up in a custom node um, with like just a, a for loop with a bunch of samples and just cranking that stuff up until it looks good. Now, um, instead of uh, getting all these samples, this just takes four samples, but they get sampled into one. So this one does not take 16 samples, right? So it's four samples plus four samples plus four samples. Uh, so it's far less than uh, how it would be uh, the other way around, but the results aren't perfect. You can just may add more samples that way uh, and I, I haven't really tested performance yet on like how much better the res these low res samples are but i assume they are a bit more efficient uh, the only use case uh, for this that just is immediately beneficial would be to set up custom bloom because you do need uh, like downscale texture to to make bloom work um, so yeah that's basically where where i'm at right now uh, if anyone has any uh, better solutions or use cases regarding this, uh, let me know. Um, I do think it's quite powerful, but there are some issues that uh, obviously still have to be resolved because it's just a preview. One is that visual bug I, uh, I showed here. Uh, another issue, and this one is, is, is very annoying actually. So if you now want to apply this blur that we made. So uh, should be post-processing volume in here. Uh, it can't find the values. So <laughs> uh, that's kind of an issue. It, it might just be me being dumb and, and not really understanding how this thing works, but uh, it has a hard time finding the values. Like if I just close these, it, it doesn't know where they are anymore, which can be quite annoying. So yeah, this is basically how to uh, mimic this material here. I hope uh, it gave you at least some information on how to use these new user scene texture nodes. Uh, if anyone has a better way to uh, blur between uh, low res textures to have like a smooth blur or something, let me know. It would be nice. Uh, maybe I'm just seeing this wrong because uh, yeah, this, I'm, I'm quite new when it comes to uh, post-processing materials, but uh, I decided to make this video to quickly showcase my findings so that other people may not have to struggle with the same issues I was dealing with. So um, yeah, that's it. If there's any questions, let me know in the comments below.